now being joined by David Knight, of course, to discuss this incident yesterday, which was the Labour MP Joe Cox, again, tragically murdered in the north of England. She was a pro-Remain campaigner. She was um, campaigning for the, uh, for the side that wants to remain in the European Union. And again, this didn't happen in a vacuum. You look at the polls. Vote leave was ahead. The polls were showing, in some cases, 19 points ahead. And more recent polls show four to seven points ahead. But they swung it round completely. Before that, the vote remain camp was ahead. Again, why is this important? Because it would deal a massive blow to the entire globalist agenda. This is part of the populist revolution sweeping the West. It's not only happening in America with Trump. It's happening in Europe with the rise of all these conservative parties. So this vote next week on the 23rd is a huge, huge deal. This could set their agenda back decades. So obviously they have an interest to exploit whatever circumstances possible to try and desperately rescue this situation. Now, if you're losing the debate, if you're losing the argument on immigration, on the economy, on sovereignty, as it applies to the European Union, then what do you do? Well, you exploit the tragic murder of someone to make political grist. That's exactly what they've done. I'm going to get more into the details uh, and the latest in a moment. But David Knight, what's your take on this uh, Joe Cox murder? You know, you're absolutely right, Paul. This is an issue that is of international importance because our election here in the United States is one really that boils down to globalism versus nationalism. We're going to lose any chance that we have of restoring individual liberty if power gets more and more consolidated. And of course, if Britain will leave the European Union, then one of these major blocks of consolidation, the European Union, towards global governance starts to unravel. And we've seen uh, efforts, as you have mentioned, uh, throughout Europe, different areas talking about the same type of thing. So this could create momentum, and they did have momentum, and now it looks like that may get lost. This happens exactly one week before the election. And I think, Paul, it's there may be something more to this than just saying, uh, using this for their own purposes. Now, the Wall Street Journal reports the killing of Joe Cox silences both sides ahead of the UK vote on EU membership. They're going to have a massive uh, uh, memorial service for her on Monday, but it hasn't really silenced them, Paul. We've got uh, Prime Minister Cameron, who, as you know, has been pushing for them uh, to remain in the European Union. He said today, our nation is rightly shocked where we see hatred, where we see division, where we see intolerance. We must drive it from our politics and out of our public life and out of our communities. You see, they were losing. And as you pointed out, Paul, you know, they, they came up with a new strategy. What is that? Wait for it. Racism. That's what uh, Alex Jones is just talking about. And so what they do is they create a narrative where the Remain people, where the European Union, where the globalists are just peaceful and inclusive. But the other people who want to have the right of self-government, they're just racist and violent. Uh, we've had David Cameron making all kinds of desperate claims that there was going to be a physical war in Europe if Britain got out of the European Union. He said there was going to be economic disaster inside of uh, Britain. He also said you're going to see interest rates go up. I mean, he's had this project of fear. And if you look at the way the media is reporting this, Paul, it's not just the Wall Street Journal saying that it is silenced. And it has, again, hasn't silenced both sides. The other side is talking about hate. They're talking about their grief and so forth and so on. But I think what's interesting, Paul, is a report from CNN. Now, it hasn't been talked about that this guy is a mental patient. Has it been talked about uh, much over there in the UK? No, it, it's it's actively being covered up. I mean, there are, you know, Breitbart's reported on it and so forth. But as you said, they've not suspended their campaign. They've become even more vociferous, yes. despite the fact that this guy was a mental patient. He had mental problems. He was on psychotropic drugs. They interviewed his friends. They interviewed his neighbors. They interviewed his family members. Listen to these quotes from his brother. Quote, we are struggling to believe what has happened. My brother is not a violent man and is not that political. We don't even know who he votes for. Yeah. I'm visibly <laughs> shaken by this news. Here's another one from his half-brother, yeah. who is, um, who is uh, half black, I believe. He's never expressed any views about Britain or politics or racist tendencies. And yet they're claiming, based on one eyewitness, who is a guy who is in the BNP, which is basically a fascist party, who, you know, he's got the motivation to make this claim for his own agenda. 
claimed that as this killer was stabbing, was shooting the Labour MP, that he was shouting Britain first. Mm -hmm. They went back and interviewed the other eyewitnesses who said he said no such thing. And in fact, the, the shopkeeper who's right across from where the murder happened put a huge note up in his window, and this is on my Twitter profile, saying that he did not say Britain first. It no. was not a political murder. This was a mentally unstable guy, you know, hopped up on psychotropic drugs. Yeah, mm -hmm. what have we seen in the aftermath? Complete, salacious, shameful exploitation by the politicians, by the media. Before this woman, this mother of two, was even dead, you had newspaper headlines saying Brexit killer. I mean, this is completely shameful. We expect nothing less from the mainstream media, but this is so transparent how they're hijacking it. They haven't suspended their campaign. They've become even more vociferous. You're talking about using how transparent it is, Paul. You're talking about how transparent yeah. it is. We've got the Southern Poverty Law Center, the usual suspects who are now coming in and talking about how this guy was a racist. I mean, that raises all kinds of red flags when you combine that with what you just talked about in terms of interviewing people there. Uh, neighbors, here's another quote. Uh, this is from CNN, even. And CNN puts out the narrative that he's a lone killer, that uh, there's a, a racist connection with it. Uh, Southern Poverty Law Center said they've got documents showing that he has a history of purchasing hate lit uh, literature from the United States. I mean, these are the people who are always there to create this narrative of right-wing extremism, the Southern Poverty Law Center. But listen to what the neighbors who knew him said. This is Diana Peters, a 65-year-old neighbor, said there was nothing to indicate this could happen, exactly what you were just saying, Paul. She says it's a total surprise he was even capable of thought, let alone action. Okay, said another longtime neighbor. Another one says, uh, yeah, he was just the ideal neighbor, helpful when you wanted it, kept to himself. Uh, she said that he taught English to foreigners. You mentioned he had a half-black brother, Paul. Uh, he taught English to foreigners. Politics never, never came up in a conversation. We never talked about anything like that, said his neighbor. She said she never saw anyone visiting his home. Uh, she said she believed that he visited his mother every Sunday, took her groceries once a week, uh, described him as very meek and mild. He spoke rationally. He did his day-to-day -day routines. But I thought it was interesting. One of the things that came out was a six-year-old interview where that was published in the uh, paper, they were talking to patients uh, from a mental institute who had been given day jobs, and they were finding them day jobs doing gardening work. And we'll tell you what that says when we come back. We've got to go to break. I'm David Knight, and we've got Paul Joseph Watson in the UK. Both of us will be right back, and we'll tell you the real story behind this shooting. This guy looks like a total patsy, like straight out of being there. If you remember Chance the Gardener, Peter Sellers' character, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin. We have Paul Joseph Watson with us for one more segment from the UK. And we have Alex Jones is going to be joining us with a special report in the next, uh, when we come back after break in the next segment. Of course, NATO, and this is what Alex is going to be talking about, NATO just came out and said that if there was a cyber hack against one of its countries, that would be grounds to start a physical war. No, we're not trying to push war, are we? Or just these peace-loving people. Uh, this is a very, very dangerous hair trigger that they have set up. And Alex is going to be talking about that in the next uh, section. Paul, one of the other news articles I saw coming out of the UK that's uh, about the Brexit vote. And, of course, the Brexit vote is going to be a week from yesterday. Everything has been silenced now in the wake of uh, this uh, murder of this uh, member of parliament who supported uh, Remain. But there was this article I saw on Breitbart, uh, London's Muslim mayor is having Remain rallies, and he's doing it with the job-clad women who are standing in the background. Uh, so it's kind of, I guess you could say that he's uh, backing Remain, but he's having the hijab women remain in the back, Paul. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's like we saw with the video clip I played er earlier. That's the fundamental belief of Islam, segregation. So you've got all the men at the front, you've got all the women relegated to the back. And, you know, he's from Tooting, which is one of these Islamic ghettos, basically. You can walk down the street, you know, it's a halal butcher, an Islamic bookstore, a mosque. This is one of the areas that has been completely taken over. It's not about diversity. As I said, this is a monoculture. They don't embrace diversity, yet we're supposed to embrace diversity. Another thing with the Brexit, um, of course, you had numerous people Christine Lagarde of the IMF, you had Alan Juppé, this left-wing French presidential candidate, 
You had an EU commissioner all come out within hours of the murder of Joe Cox and say that, for example, with the EU commissioner, Dimitris Avramopoulos, quote, she was murdered for her dedication to European democracy and humanity. Alain Juppé said she was, quote, shamefully murdered because of her beliefs. This guy was a mentally ill person on drugs with no political history. Yeah. The closest people to him said he wasn't political at all. The eyewitnesses said that the claims he said Britain first were completely wrong. The one person they've got who said that is a BNP member, yet they're running with it. Yeah. They exploited this within minutes, which shows you exactly. I mean, their entire campaign is not based on having a fair debate. This should be about immigration, jobs, the economy, sovereignty. That's right. Their campaign is so discredited, it's so crumbling that they've had to basically dance on the grave of this poor dead woman to try and reinvigorate their campaign. And this is the same crowd that says, you know, after every Islamist terror attack, not all Muslims, don't blame all Muslims, yet in the immediate aftermath of this, they blamed all Vote Leave supporters. Absolutely shameful, and it's still going on. Oh yeah, just like in the United States, they say don't blame Muslims, and yet they blame all gun owners. Uh, for what's happened yeah. there. We're the ones who need to have our guns taken away. And, and as the Wall Street Journal is saying, and of course the Wall Street Journal and all the financial community and the bankers who want this globalism, uh, they want uh, Britain to stay in the European Union. They're saying, well, this silences both sides. As you point out, it hasn't silenced the people uh, who want Britain to remain. They've been using this uh, vociferously and continuously, but the people who have been silenced are the people who uh, were there saying that we need to leave, we need to be independent. They are the ones who are being silenced, and they're going to be silenced because for this entire next weekend, as well as going through the memorial service next Monday, everything leading up to it, all the narrative is going to be about how people who want to leave are nothing but hateful racists. And that's why we've got the Southern Poverty Law Center jumping in with a bunch of bogus, doubtful information with us. Yeah, and now you've got Angela Merkel coming out. She's not being silent. She's come out and said that it, you know, it characterizes the radical atmosphere of the rhetoric that surrounds this whole conversation about Europe. Well, this is the same woman whose policy brought in one million plus Muslim migrants into Germany. A lot of them who are Syrian, polls show 21% of Syrians support ISIS. So she's literally bringing in hundreds of thousands of people who are radicalized, who support ISIS, who want the death penalty for gay people, who want Sharia law. And yet she's blaming people who simply want to reclaim some essence of sovereignty and freedom back for themselves, for their parliamentary democracy. She's saying that they're the radicals. Again, absolutely absurd that this statement would come from her. They're dancing on the grave. They're exploiting this. And it's shameful. You know, we had... Um uh, former mayor of London, Boris Johnson, who favors Britain uh, becoming a sovereign nation again. And he gave eight reasons why Britain would be better off with an exit. And as you're talking about this, Paul, the people as part of the Leave campaign came up with very concrete proposals, talking about how much money was going to be put back into the national health system and so forth and so on, showing the economic benefits. And that has all been shut down. And what's the usual tactic from the usual suspects? Racism.